people said to me, you know, there's kids queuing up this side street, you know, in the rain and at night, and it seems to be burgers. Nobody queued in Glasgow for anything then. I went along one night, uh, I queued. I couldn't believe how long we had the queue. I couldn't believe how slow they were, uh, how disorganised they were. And I couldn't believe how tolerant everybody was of it. But when we got the burgers and took them home and there were other things as well, it was great, you know, the food was really good. And the amazing thing about it was they really took kind of pride in what they were doing and they did it their way. And clearly there was a market for that. And I think from there, uh, the whole thing just kind of started to take off. So the way that I remember the burger scene in Glasgow kind of uh, years ago, um, there was uh, Adlib, which is still here. Uh, and there was a place on Queen Street called uh, Buck Rogers uh, Burger Station. And it was this sort of like really cheesy space themed burger restaurant. And then apart from that, you had the usual McDonald's, Wimpy's and all these kind of things. But that was really it. From 2012 to, when are we, 2016, to about 2014, 2015, I mean, Glasgow, just in here, there was boom, 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 all popping up all over the place. When we kind of started to write about burgers, it was when uh, Meat Hammer was just kind of uh, popping up, but nice and sleazy. For me, the, the sort of the one that opened it all up was um, the guys in Meat Hammer uh, who done it in Nice and Sleazy's. Um, and that was probably the first time that we sort of looked at it and went, that's, I mean, they're doing something completely different. They're doing something at a much higher standard than anything that you can buy. I remember Meat Hammer, obviously they, they, were, they were ahead of the game. Meat Hammer Limited started, if memory serves me correct, 2012, maybe 2011, that kind of era. I was running Where the Monkeys Sleep way back in 2001 with two friends, ran it for 10 years, and then um, the kitchen at Nice and Sleazy's, um, they asked us to come in and do where the monkey sleeps stuff, like kind of sandwiches and whatnot. So we figured when we're doing it, we would investigate the world of, you know, what do people want to eat when they're in a pub? They don't want really sandwiches. They don't want fine dining. You know, the sleazy's clientele don't really want steak pie or lasagna or um, fish and chips. So, you know, what would you want? And at that time, there wasn't really uh, a burger scene to really to speak of. Pubs were doing a burger as part of their sort of menu breakdown, um, but it was just kind of, you know, an aside. And it wasn't, you know, it wasn't particularly good. I think what makes a good burger is initially the love that goes into it, the thinking about it to begin with. What will go in it, what works, what am I looking for? Do I want it to be spicy? Do I want it to be uh, fresh? Do I want it to be meaty? Um, or do I want it to be, you know, uh, a quick mm -hmm. the concept before the creation of the burger you need to make sure that goes with that and that goes with that and you're getting a crunch and you're getting a slop and you're getting a dribble and you're getting a the the buzz from the heat and a tingle in your lips and a tingle in your tongue and obviously now you're you've come back to Dunfermline and you're cooking here was there a reason for you leaving Glasgow? So they asked me to come through and at the time, the scene in Glasgow, for want of a bit of description, I was kind of getting a bit claustrophobic. It was just saturated almost, um, where the people that were doing the good offering were doing a good offering, but then everybody else saw burgers, you know, like get in amongst it. A lot of people were jumping on the bandwagon to make money. It took a while to catch on for people to come in and want burgers. We did the Lucretia, which was the one that won the James versus Burger vote in 2012, I think. And that won the vote for the, the best burger in Glasgow. Um, totally unexpected, you know. And then after that, I mean, you know, the sort of place just got rammed, the sales went up and um, just more and more people were totally into it. I didn't think there was such a big undercurrent of opinion. Um, because we knew about the James versus Burger website, um, and but you know it's, it was just like incredible that the amount of people that voted and got on and uh, you know proactively voted for us, which was utterly unexpected. Um, so it it was one of those sort of visual body snatcher moments.
started writing the blog in 2012, uh, April 2012, I believe. I decided to start James vs. Burger simply because there was no other resources online for finding the best burger in Glasgow. Like uh, my girlfriend and I, we travel a lot and we have family in America and, and things like that. So whenever we go traveling somewhere, one of the things that we would always do is uh, go online and search for where's the best burger in New York, where's the best burger in London or whatever. And uh, one night we were really, really hungry, um, as we are quite a lot, and uh, we thought, let's go for a burger. And we kind of just started having this discussion about, okay, well, where is the best one in Glasgow? So we we went online to search it, and there was just nothing online. There was no search results, and there was just nothing out there. I definitely think that the burger boom uh, has raised the bar. I think that even if uh, the burger scene shrinks a little bit, uh, I definitely don't think that you could go back to having burgers that are rubbish because people now know what they want and people know what to expect from a good burger so that's going to be the standard now so it's, it's only going to get better and the quality is only going to grow even if the you know the number of burger restaurants opening up uh, starts to slow down. My favourite Glasgow burger has definitely changed over the years many times. Uh, as I said Adlib was the original, that was my favourite uh, back uh, several years ago uh, but you know as the scene's kind of grown and grown I've had you know Nice and Sleazy's were right up there at the top and then the guys from Burger Meets Bun came along uh, and then Bread Meets Bread came along and then uh, El Perro Negro came along and El Perro Negro is still, still right up there uh, as my favourite burger in Glasgow and then you've got guys like Block you know, all these people have been at the top and of my list at some point uh, but right now El Perro Negro is still uh, the top burger in Glasgow in my opinion. I used to work in telecoms and the opportunity came around that they, they were getting rid of a load of people and I was given a, a decent payout to go. I wanted to go into burger, barbecue and all that sort of thing and then I didn't have any contacts so I sort of felt no one's, no one's doing like really decent Spanish stuff, so I was like, well, go for that. Um, and that's really where the El Perro Negro name came from. I got a conversation with a girl that worked in Block. They said, you need to really speak to Danny in Block, the mad chef. And we sat down and had a conversation that went from Spanish food to burgers. When I caught on to the kind of burger thing, it was probably in the beginning with Nick El Perro Negro. And when he came on board and done his kind of pop-up and Block, that's when I kind of seen, right, this needs to be taken seriously, and that's where I kind of learned a few things from him. And then I said, well, I've got an idea for a burger, which was the top dog, which is the, the sort of infamous one now. You, you can't just come in and do a standard cheeseburger, because it's always about being something that's a little bit more brash. You get really, really high quality ingredients, put them together in a way that it's absolutely decadent. It's probably one of the most decadent burger you'll probably try. From the combination of the actual beef that I used to the bone marrow and roquefort, um, butters, the sort of caramelised onions have been absolutely drenched in butter themselves, really good uh, bacon and then obviously black truffle mayonnaise, I mean all that combined into the one thing. A burger's a good vehicle for flavours because you can essentially just put everything into the one place. So it was initially put out for me to set myself apart from everyone else. Um, the difficulty is following that up with other burgers because <laughs> it's still the big, it will still always be the biggest seller uh, regardless. I mean, people, there's a, almost a religious following for it. A couple of like very very small pop ups in block, um, and then the James versus Burger review came along, and then it went a bit mental. I was approached by Brewdog to come in and do the events in Brewdog, and here we are at the moment really. Still can't really believe the attention it gets. Um, I'm always a bit staggered by the fact that people will book weeks in advance to try and get burgers. In terms of sort of the advantages of the pop-up, I think for me it's it's probably the fact you've been able to make mistakes and learn from them and you've not sort of put yourself right out there. I think if it was if I just went and done something straight off the bat, it probably wouldn't be where it is now and it probably wouldn't have the reputation it has now. I think now we're probably at a stage where, after a while, that we're ready to open up a place. And I think that's that's the next log logical step, I think, is to, to open somewhere and then probably, and hopefully, maybe a couple of other places beyond that. Um, but yeah, uh, I think it's given me the advantage of time.
Glasgow's a funny kind of city to open a restaurant in because the rates are high. Uh, I don't know how relaxed the city council is about food places and consent for that, but it's always seemed to me over the years to be very difficult to start at the bottom in Glasgow. The great thing is, you know, if you think you can cook, which by the way is usually a fatal mistake to make, uh, and you want to start a little business, then you can do it on the food truck, street food end of the market for a very small investment. I first noticed when burgers were becoming a trend on the television, to be honest. In the beginning, there was Man V Food, that cult American program, which a lot of people seem to be watching. I watched it, I watched it with my kids, and I thought it was great. And the great thing about that was that it basically said, look, you don't have to be making fine dining quality food or high quality food to take pride in it and to make it individual. And then I kind of noticed in Glasgow that there was a kind of mushrooming of tiny little places. And the interesting thing about it was people were coming from backgrounds that were not necessarily, you know, kind of burger backgrounds. There was no burger background. If you wanted a burger in Glasgow, then you could get one anywhere, but they were all exactly the same and they were all cooked from frozen and they were all delivered by Break Brothers or something like that. That was the situation before then. You simply could not get a decent burger. And there was a, a burger competition which was run by Adlib. I just got an email saying, do you want to go along and judge in it, which I thought was something to do on a Tuesday night. Uh, quite a good laugh. Went along. I was surprised that many people were there and I was surprised at how many kind of pop up -y type burger places there were. And, you know, the, the competitions were a success. Again, it introduced this idea that, you know, chefs could take pride in what they're doing and not just open packets and put things in grills and put them in plates, you know, with frozen chips. Burger Meats Bun opened in July 2013. There was a couple of people starting to do it around about 2012, 2013 when we came on the scene, but I like to think that when Burger Meats Bun opened that we kind of... Um, encourage the growth of the burger scene in Glasgow. I'd always kind of kept a close eye on food trends and things that were going on down in London and what was popular and there was a big boom in not street food but also particularly burgers down there and I think naturally things that work down there gradually come up here eventually. Um, the other reason was just burgers are always and have been and always will be so popular and in Scotland we have the best meat arguably of anywhere in the world. Now we've created Street Food Putter Club, which is sort of an evolution or development on Burger Meats Bun and our sister brand Bo Cantina, which is a East Asian street food. So the idea with Street Food Putter Club is essentially it's an events and catering company, more focusing on the event side. The cost of running a restaurant, particularly within the city centre, are pretty high and it seems to be only getting higher. I mean from a you know from an operational point of view there's so much that goes into it that maybe the, the, the customer doesn't see and, and a lot of business owners don't think of or see at the start and I think with the costs getting higher it, it does encourage small independents like ourselves to maybe look at trying to of ways around that and going mobile and doing pop-ups and different events and with what the way we've done things which is always buying the best quality product um, and making it all in-house in so buying in the cuts of beef mince and making our own burgers rather than just buying in the burgers all these things already our costs were, were relatively high for a burger restaurant the restaurants thankfully were still doing well but we just felt because of the massive growth in, in burgers in glasgow we feel like we were the first ones to do things differently so Again, we kind of wanted to do things differently, we wanted to stay ahead of the trend. The burger itself was the main thing. The, the whole planning in the restaurant, it sounds ridiculous, but it started with the burger. It wasn't like, let's find a premises, let's come up with a name. It's everything kind of started with the burger itself and then grew from there. With our passion for food and, and with the amount of great Scotch beef around us, it, it just seemed obvious to us and it was really key to us to get the best quality beef and the best quality recipe. So I'd worked with Jonathan Honeyman from the Aberfoyle Butcher before um, and just seemed like a natural choice because he is one of Scotland's leading meat scientists and is 
even more passionate about meat than we are. So we teamed up with Jonathan, played around with all different sort of cuts, different fats, um, changing the percentage of each cut and how much fat you're putting in it, played around with different salts, cooking methods, everything. Um, every sort of option was exhausted until we came up with the right thing and uh, eventually were pretty proud of what we produced. The original one in Glasgow was Burger Meats Bun and we spent months developing the product to achieve this optimum burger. And it went back, the tools that I was using to get there with them was very much a case of what I'd learned in France. What I'd learned by the playing and the experimentation behind the scenes of, of how to take a product and realise it to its best. It just wasn't trimmings off the table, make it look red, mince it, season it and get it out. It was taking those individual characteristics doing something different and giving the best meat-eating quality in the plate. The guys from Burger Meats Bun and I, we spent months experimenting. And it was a case that we sat down with different muscles, cooked them, trialled them, seasoned them, mixed them, did the same with the fats to achieve that optimum burger. And from that we developed a range of bespoke artisan burgers. What happened then People seen this happening, jumped on the bandwagon and started to copy that model. We want to take the individual muscle groups and treat them on their characteristics. Some do more work, some do less work. More work usually means more flavour. Less work means more tender, but lacks in flavour. But we can use fat as a vehicle to promote that. Studies done have shown that the most important fact um, that a consumer is looking for, number one, is continually tenderness. Therefore, just taking scrap off the table and mincing it, because they think they're breaking it all up, isn't going to give the desired result. We'll get something that is palatable, but not what could be achieved. When I started off in school, it was very much a case of I wanted to do home economics, and was very quickly told, cooking's for girls, boys do engineering, went down the engineering route. And that was good, I enjoyed it. The end up was, it's amazing how you get back to what your passion is. And I ended up back at the food industry. And my father started a butcher shop and I went and worked with him in, it in the family business. Got the opportunity uh, to go to France to learn a bit more. Then started looking at why is the meat so good here? What was the geology of the, the ground impacted on the grass, impacted in the cattle? I think we need to understand what we eat and put in our cattle affects the flavours <laughs> and how we work with that. I'm not keen on imposing us onto nature. I'd rather line up and work with it. And I think that's where Jonathan and I are beginning to say, this is very interesting. And as a consumer, I'm, I'd, I'd like to work with people who are working like that. What we need to do though, is look at educating the public more because they are very accepting of what is put in front of them and what they're being told. They should be probing more. What should we be probing for? What should we be asking? And how can we prove that that's what we say it is? And how do we recognise that when we eat it? As a chef, a burger was just a burger on your menu. And then all of a sudden it was like, you need to make the fucking burger really good. And it made me realise that I had to up my game and start finding out where the meat came from. Like what ratio you're putting in between chuck mince, steak mince, what the, all the different types is, putting beef fat into your burgers, what seasoning you're using, making sure you're caramelising the burger properly. Like. I've been partying in the club scene, rave scene, drug scene, any, any kind of underground parties. Most of my life since a teenager, I've been a fucking crazy bastard. So I've been known as Mad Danny, and I thought, why not change that to Mad Chef and try and put a positive spin on it? That's kind of where it started on block, and just like sheerly through being an absolute ADHD media monster, just obsessively posting over and over and over again and basically having the attitude to go I'm no scared for another chef or anybody else to think I'm shit just because I post up something that he wouldn't have the fucking balls to do. I would never say I know what I'm doing. I just, I think the only reason I did was because I put a bit of theatre into my burgers. I wasn't a purist. I respect the purists out there and I respect the knowledge that they have but my burgers and what I did was just theatre and fun with taste and that's the only reason that I think that the dirty burger went well and a few other burgers went well and that that's surely it because it was upfront and it was honest and it was just at the right time 
when things were going on and people locked into it and they understood for the, the projections that I was putting on social media that I was aware of it is just a bugger but let's have some fucking fun man and it's like about two years now and I still say at least about I'd say about 30, 40, 30 buggers in a day like, and, but when it was peak it was like easy 80, 90 to 100 and like busy, busy days when I was at school, every break time we used to go to Easterhouse Shopping Centre and basically we were in there and the reason we were in was for our chips and gravy. The whole school went for the chips and gravy. And I thought about it like, man, that gravy was awesome. I was like, I wouldn't just eat that and chips. And then I was like, I'm gonna pour it off something. Like take that nostalgic memory to when I was at school. My bacon fries that I've been eating quite a lot and I've, I'm, I've been exposed to quite a bit in my life. How can I put that in a burger? I went, well, let's put that on there, that on there, and then put coleslaw on it, and then pour all this gravy on it. Instead of dirty, dirty, so you go dirty, it's a Glasgow saying. It's a mess, it's expected to be a mess. It's going to fall apart when you're eating it. That's the whole point of it. I'm kind of done creating new burgers. I maybe no mind creating some vegan or veggie kind of style burgers, but as far as working with meat in a bun, I'd say I'm like, Cool man, I enjoyed my time, I'm done. It's no vegan food that's the future, and it's no vegetarian, it's food that's good for you. If you're pursuing a style or an area of food, and you've kind of done it, and why keep pursuing it? You should constantly teach yourself, constantly move, and constantly learn about other people's dietary needs. I think there's a couple of times showing themselves up. Healthy eating, vegan, vegetarian, is definitely going to become a bigger thing. Without a doubt, the healthy, the healthy things are becoming bigger. Or it might just be me now that I'm in my 30s. Street food is massive. It's huge. And pop-ups and all these things. We want, we want to be cool. Do you know, we want to be like, oh God, I hate to say this, the London of the North. I started Glasgow Food Geek in 2013. We didn't want to get in this rut of always going to the same restaurants again and again and again. So we created this list of 100 restaurants, then just decided to set up a blog, mostly for my family to laugh at. Almost immediately, when I started to engage with Twitter and things like that and started to find the food group in Glasgow, they started talking about Burger Meets Bun. It's gourmet and it's artisan burgers and it's exciting burgers that are a little bit different. And I think almost instantly people kind of latched on to this local independent place that was going to do something like you could get in London. Anyone who reads the blog or follows me on Twitter knows that it's bread meets bread every day of the week. There is no burger in this city better than bread meets bread. With the chains moving in, I think it's kind of killed the buzz a little bit. I think people are over it when the big chains move in. And so many of them moved in so fast. I mean, St Vincent Street, where bread meets bread is, is like Burger Alley. Do you know, it's, it's ridiculous. But the great thing about that is bread meets bread is always hoaching, always mobbed. You know, there's always a queue, always a 15 minute wait. No place else is. We thought we would actually struggle and have less of the business that we had. Funnily, our busiest weeks kept coming after they opened. So we got busier as the other places opened and it continued that way. And which meant us really working hard and basically living this, but which also meant that people were now coming over here in this street for the burgers. So it became like a meat burger street kind of thing. And the offering was there and people then decided I want to go for this or that. And luckily, they liked what we offered. So they just kept continuing. So we haven't had the effect at all of the chains opening business-wise. We opened late 2013. We thought there was a, not even gap in the market, but probably the offering wasn't there in terms of what we offer now, or we try to offer from day one, which was a simple, honest food that is served and made using local ingredients, but it's accessible to all. Landlords of the city centre at that time were not having any of this, having a local, someone who hasn't done this before, to actually pass the unit to them. It was almost impossible to convince anyone. We used that kind of a gap in the middle of really economy growing and post-recession, and that was an ideal time. They called it a tenant's market. I think we were just going with a trend. I wouldn't say we were before the trend or following it. I think we were, everything kind of happened at the same time. 
And it helped probably seeing guys like Buddies and convincing us that there was a market for it. Some people say burgers, if that's all as much you can do with them. But I think it's so easy to mess up and so easy to get greedy and use ingredients you shouldn't and mess it up and add something you shouldn't again and all that. Do not mess about all you add is some salt and pepper to quality cuts of meat and you come up with a really good burger. And if you can consistently do that and cook it properly in a good equipment by staff that care and want to care about the food. 2015, we won two or three awards that we're kind of proud of. We won like people's vote for Glasgow's best burger by a landslide, which was amazing. That was really mattered to us, the recognition from people that we actually care about. Then 2016, we won Scotland's best burger. And that's quite a push. I think we can now maybe have a bigger unit somewhere and fight it off, continue this kind of a battle with the big boys of burgers. So hopefully grow but at a steady pace. We've seen, as you know, quite a few casualties. I mean, cocktail and burgers went first, then meat hammer went, then jack or the viand went as well. Bur burger meets bun also from the current location. So Buddies is now from three or four units to like one location. So quite a few people sort of stopped doing this. It kind of, but we hopefully will have some more coming up. I was really looking forward to having more local, because there are quite a few burger connoisseurs in Glasgow. There are quite a few young, talented chefs who could actually start something up and take the fight on. I don't think the burger war is done. Just stage one is probably done, and there's going to be more and more of these coming. There was a kind of brief flare-up of people who were interested in producing something that was good and quality and full of flavour, and uh, pretty soon the chains came kind of lumbering down the motorway and to a large extent steamrollered them out of existence. Or some of these guys have gone on to do other things because burger was a fashion, you know. Uh, now there's different food fashions. Burgers will forever be in the hearts of people and it will never ever change. People will eat burgers for the next 20, 30 years. They have such an emotional connection to them. They have a love for them. Like anything that becomes so popular so quickly, it kind of reaches a sort of euphoric peak, as it were, and that can sometimes be a slightly negative thing. I think from a customer point of view, it can become a little bit generic and a little bit boring. Um, but then naturally, uh, you know, those doing burgers really well will we'll keep doing burgers well and keep having their following. I think it is pretty saturated um, in the cities, in the big cities. That was the start of us changing the reputation that Glasgow food has. And I think when the, the gourmet burgers and things came out, we realised that not only could we have the food that they have, you know, in London and Edinburgh to a certain extent, because Edinburgh has an amazing food scene, but we should have it and we can support it. Because usually that wee artisan guy is as much drive to get it right on provenance and why I'm doing it than the Michelin star guy. People are just really looking for good quality ingredients and they want to know that what they're eating is fresh and they want to know that real care has been put into to making it. And I think that the guys that you see now who are at the top of the game, that's what they focus on. It's not just a gourmet burger trend. The level of food, the, the standard of food in Glasgow as a whole has improved. The good small players always have a cult following, a loyal base, who are anti-establishment, as it were, sort of anarchic burger lovers who wouldn't eat in a Byron or a Five Guys or, you know, a, a chain. That is so accessible. Uh, it's, not, it's not kind of pretentious in any way. And I think that you can do so much with it. You know, you can be so creative with a burger. You know, some, you can get a great burger that's got just cheese on it, or you can have one that's got some really, really creative stuff. And, I think there's a lot of room for, you know, creative chefs to, to really do some good work there. So I think it's just a combination of that and just the fact that, you know, who doesn't have a burger? And even if the burger scene kind of dies off a little bit, burgers are never going to go away. They're always going to be here because they've always been here, but uh, they've just gotten a lot bigger in the last few years.
cool, man. Is it a wrap? That is a wrap. It's a wrap.